Let's check in with Alabama softball coach Patrick Murphy, head coach of the Red Hot Alabama softball team, coming off its latest win up in Coleman, Alabama last night, a 6-4 win over Belmont. And Murph, as we bring you in, looked like a super crowd uh, and a great night for Alabama softball and home hometown product, Claire Jenkins. Oh, yeah, it was so much fun. You know, we love to do those kind of things. We kind of bring the the show on the road and – you know, we walk up and the, they open the gates at three o'clock, and the the, the game didn't start till six. And um, I got there probably four o'clock, and there was already probably a thousand people there. So it was really a a cool event for that city. The Parks and Rec uh, people did a great job, Jesse Newsom and all of his staff, uh, and obviously Claire, her mom and dad. Uh, we had a little barbecue dinner afterwards in one of the pavilions afterwards. So it was just a great night for softball in the state of Alabama. Talk about the play of your team of late, Murph. Uh, you you got to – I know coaches, they, they can pick apart, they can dissect, uh, even when things are going great. Uh, but just talk about, especially in Gainesville over the weekend, to do what you guys did in about a 24-hour period of time against one of the fellow elite programs in college softball. Um you know, from a confidence standpoint, uh, everything that goes into it, what, what can a series like that do for a team? Well, you're right. It was basically, it was less than 24 hours because we started a doubleheader at 5.30 Friday afternoon and then started the uh, third game at 2 o'clock, and we were done by 4. So yeah. it was just a crazy, crazy quick weekend. The pitchers did awesome. Start with Montana Fouts, who was the pitcher of the week. She won her game Friday night, and then Sarah Cornell pitched great right after her, and then Really, the key of the weekend was Crystal Goodman gave us uh, about four and a third really strong innings, shutout ball Friday or Saturday afternoon, and then Montana was still on a pitch count, so she and you know she had some pitches to go, and the goal was to uh, have Crystal get us two times through the lineup, and then Montana finish it off. And when she got the last girl to ground out to third, the trainer looked at me with the peace sign, and I gave it back to her, and she said, "No, she had two pitches left." So I was like, "Thank you, Lord." So she got it. She got it in under the pitch count, and um, you know we scored enough runs. We played really, really good defense. Three games, we had the just one error, and that was by uh, Fouts in that the last game. It was a kind of a weird play, and we thought we got her, but um, just really good team defense, key hits, and then the, the pitchers did the rest. You know, Murph, when I watch your team, the, the talent's obvious. I mean, you, it, you can see it. But something else I notice is the mindset of this club. And we've talked about it throughout the season. Uh, and, and I mean it in the in the most complimentary of terms. But you've got some real killers in this lineup. Uh, not just talented people. You've got people like KB Sides and, and Skylar Wallace. Um, you know, relatively new to the program, but they're not scared of the big moment, are they, Murph? No, and, you know, KB's two-run home run uh, Saturday was huge for us. Uh, the bottom of the lineup came through. Matty, Morgan, Skyler Wallace, and KB were terrific all weekend long. I think the second game, Friday night, they were 6 for 11 with um, like four RBIs and four runs scored. So uh, seven, eight, nine were killers for us. Um, you know, another kid that's really um, just a very competitive, resilient kid is Kaylee Tao, and I think a lot of people get their energy from her. And then another kid that's kind of an unsung hero who has brought great, great, um, I don't know, excitement and, and positivity is Kayla Davis, who's a freshman who, you know, doesn't get to play much, but she has added so much to the dugout atmosphere. Uh, she, she brought a lot of positive energy all weekend long in Gainesville. I'll tell you, a weekend can change a lot, right? Not only your series, you guys at Florida, but what we saw with Kentucky and Auburn up in Lexington on Sunday and Monday. And with that, here come the Wildcats into town for a now huge SEC series. And uh, look, Murph, Kentucky is a place where you've done pretty well from a recruiting standpoint of late too, right? Yeah, you know, and I'm sure that's going to be – Somebody's going to think about that this weekend because we have Tao, who was the player of the year her senior year, and then Montana was the player of the year her senior year in high school. And, you know, obviously two of the biggest uh, prospects to come out of Kentucky, and we were lucky enough to get both of them. You know, I saw 
Tao, I think it was an eighth grader one year up in Huntsville at a tournament, and you could tell right away that she was a great hitter. And then Montana, we probably saw her as a seventh grader at a, uh, a tournament um, in Atlanta. And, you know, she probably had 50 full rides from all over the country. And, you know, again, you know, we've talked about her before, but her personality, her demeanor, her off the field stuff just means so much more to us. And, um, you know, if, if she was a kid that was um, a football player, she'd probably win the Heisman, you know, her junior and senior year. She's that type of kid. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're fortunate to have both of them on our side. Let's talk about this batter, batter's box infraction, Murph. Uh, I think a lot of sort of novice fast pitch fans, softball fans that tuned in over the weekend uh, saw some of it, uh, both for Alabama and Florida. It seems to be especially troublesome for slappers, given the footwork yeah. involved. Talk about how that's evolved and become such a big part of the game now. Well, I'd say three years ago at the World Series, there was a couple uh, lefty slappers that – were completely like almost they would step and they would be right in front of home plate, which is obviously out of the batter's box. Their entire foot would be out of the box. And I guess it was bad enough on TV that, um, you know, and in years past, I would say to an umpire, hey, could you watch her? She's like way out of the box. And then the umpire would say, man, you want me to watch the pitch or do you want me to watch the batter? So really there was no, okay, what do I want to say to him? And uh, I guess the rules committee decided, okay, this needs to be a little bit tougher, uh, you know, enforcement. So they, they changed the rule and it used to be the whole foot had to be out. Well, they changed the rule two years ago where any part of the foot out of the chalk line of the batter's box was going to be called out. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, they have a emphasis on a couple of rules. And last year it was obstruction and the, the slapper out of the box. And, you know, man, it was called, shoot, any little thing. And then it kind of it slowed down a little bit. And then at the beginning of the year this year, it wasn't as bad. And then all of a sudden it started to pick up a little bit. But... Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, Alyssa a couple times has been called out, but we w- we watched the replay and she was still in the box. Yeah. So it's unfortunate, um, you know, that it's to come to that. And it's I don't know how they decide that. I don't know if they guess or what, but um, Murph, you know, can, you, where can we're you go at. up there and kick that line out? I, I'm not I I'm not advocating working around the rules but we've seen it in baseball and other things in the past that back line but do they do they really pay close attention to that it's i mean really after the third inning there is no box yeah so you know and for us it's like okay if it's very very obvious if she's you know she's stepping on the plate or in front of the plate you know yeah especially on an outside pitch when the umpire kind of has the full view of the home plate call it but you know, if it's like a toe, I don't know. It's not that much of an advantage for the kid. Yeah. It's tough on slappers, no doubt about it. Hey, Murph, we appreciate the time as always. Best of luck this weekend against Kentucky. Certainly encourage everyone to go out to what should be an exciting series with the Wildcats at Rhodes Stadium this weekend on the University of Alabama campus. Thanks a lot, Murph. Yeah, we need a big, big home crowd. So thanks a lot, Travis.